Hi everybody, welcome back to Spurverse, my scale model universe, 65 million years in the making. Welcome to a brand new show, it's great to have you along. And this week I thought we would do something a little different. We've never done anything like this on the channel. And so I thought it would be a lot of fun to do something that was more about painting and uh, the diorama than it really was about the building. Although I've got a couple of thoughts about uh, this, this particular kit that I'll, I'll share with you. And uh, it's uh, early morning here in California, so I'm starting off with a cup of tea in my Build Something Spruverse cup, which I'm shamelessly promoting because if you go to the uh, uh, World of Wayne Amazon store, either in the UK or here, here in the US and uh, click on the uh, the t-shirts the teespring area you'll see coffee mugs and you'll see shirts uh, not just for my channel but for the Aztec dummy as well the great Lou Del Meso and uh, the reason why I am shamelessly plugging this is because all of the proceeds from these sales are going to uh, the Parkinson's Foundation um, now uh, the entire year I know that uh, Wayne has been talking about this on his channel, and so uh, I'm happy and thrilled to be uh, supporting that. I know Wayne's father suffers from it, and it's a personal, um, it, it's a personal uh, of importance to, to Wayne and, and Esther, and so uh, I'm happy to contribute however I can. So if you want a Build Something shirt or mug, please go over there. I'll try to get a link in the, in the description of this video and um, buy hundreds of these <laughs> mugs and shirts so that we can support Parkinson's and uh, get rid of it. Let's get rid of it. Okay, enough about that. Um, this is a vinyl kit. Um, these kits uh, are from, this one particular one is from Pegasus. Here, I'll, uh, I'll show you the, the, the box up front. Uh, I'm sure you've all seen this one. And uh, there were some Horizon kits, you know, from the Jurassic Park series that were out for a while. And uh, they're, they're slightly different in terms of uh, how they look. You know, the uh, T-Rex the in Jurassic Park had a lot more of a boxed jaw kind of, of look to give it that sort of very ominous uh, feel. But this is quite a nice sculpt. Now, it is in vinyl. And... Uh, <sighs> I'm not a super fan of vinyl. Uh, first of all, this thing is very heavy. It, it, it's heavy, and um, it's going to be a little bit of a challenge to get these seams cleaned up. Well, we'll talk about that when we deconstruct. And um, it's also going to be a bit of a challenge to paint because uh, acrylics, for the most part, um, and the Tamiyas that I use, they don't love vinyl. They just don't. So what I am recommending you do is give this a good wash in a, 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 a sort of mild detergent uh, to get any grease or anything off of it. Get it washed. Let it dry thoroughly. And then uh, before you get ready to put your primer on, hit it with some um, adhesion promoter. Um, this is what I'm using here. Uh, there's several of them on the market. This is, uh, this is from Dupacolor. And as you can see, it's ideal for plastic, vinyl, and chrome. Um, so I am highly recommending that you get yourself some of this. Um, it, it, it's, it's a really good thing to have in your arsenal because it does help uh, with uh, a, a lot of the issues that we have in terms of paint peel. Uh, the one thing I would say is um, it does it does ask you uh, to give it um, three or four minutes um, and allow it to dry for three or four minutes before you hit it with your primer. So it's something you kind of have to do uh, in, in, in kind of unison. You know, don't hit it with your adhesion promoter and leave it overnight because um, there's an evaporation issue, I think, uh, and it'll lose, it'll lose its, its, its reactivity, which is what you want. But anyway, 
I do recommend an adhesion promoter. And so um, we're going to put this, uh, this T-Rex uh, from Pegasus, we're going to put it on a, um, on, on, on a, uh, in, in a diorama. Now, um, I've, seen, I've seen several, whoa, we just lost her. Nobody panic, nobody panic, she's not glued together. Um, I have seen several of these built on, online. And um, what, what you'll notice uh, is that they're all on small, some of them, but for the most part, it's not fair to say all of them, but for the most part, the ones that I saw, they were all on very small round dioramas. And I think this beast needs some room. It, it, it needs, it deserves, I, I should say, it deserves to be on something a little more substantial. So I have chosen this base which, um, uh, you know, yeah, it's a little large, but I think it's going to be worth it um, because I can bring in some driftwood and things like that. I can really uh, bring in some larger leaves, give it a, you know, soften it up a little bit and give it some intrigue. Uh, the thing that I love about this kit is that, um, here, let me, uh, let me uh, get you closer here. Um, the thing, whoa, sorry about that. The thing I love about this is, is it actually is not just the, the dinosaur. It's got this little uh, stegosaurus that it, 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 it's, kill, it's, it's got a kill, right? So I think that adds an awful lot of drama. And it's just, it's just happened. So this beast is, is quite something. And it does really pop. Um, and I think you can see here that the expression is quite dramatic. I mean, it's quite fierce. Uh, but you can also see here that we've got um, quite a bit to, to clean up. So we've definitely got uh, our work cut out for us here. But um, I think you'll agree that uh, this is, is definitely one of those, um, it's one of those, one of those kits that once in a while you get a hankering for it and I go, you know what? It's time for me to do something like this. So I'm going to tackle it now. Um, so obviously this is going to be uh, a lot of, of really what we do with paint and a lot of what we do with finishing the diorama to really make it dramatic. So I'm hoping um, at least at this point in my uh, somewhat um, uh, illustrious uh, career, <laughs> that we could do something, uh, uh, something that I think we could all be proud of. The thing of it is too, which is really interesting when it comes to color combinations, I find it fascinating that everybody's giving you key colors. You know, I, I love it that, you know, paleontologists are telling us what they think these reptiles look like. And we have a pretty good idea, but for the love of God, paint it the way you want. D don't try and, and, and do, do something because somebody told you to. Just have fun with it. Um, the other thing I've noticed too is, is when you look at this just in its physical shape, um, it casts interesting shadows. So I don't know how much of the deep shadows we're going to really need to do. We'll see as we go along. But it does cast its own shadows, and that is very helpful. Um, one of the things you can see here um, on the, on the close-up is we've got um, some pretty good variations in the skin some interesting mottling, and we're going to have to kind of replicate that. Now, one of the things we're going to have to do is we're going to have to get into some of these joints. You can see this one right here. Um, and if I actually uh, sort of pick this up now and carefully tip it over, uh, you'll, you'll start to see We've got the tail we've got to, to, to clear, clean up. Um, what else have we got? Um, ba -ba -ba -bum -ba -bum. We've got uh, the jaw here, uh, which you can see uh, we've got to deal with. And then, um, and we've got our hind legs that we have to deal with too. So they're all going to need to be puttied. And... The, the trick there, of course, is to try and create some seamless lines. Now, um, this, 
this kit's got this interesting mottling on it. So when it comes to putting your epoxy putty in here, you need to try and figure out how you're going to actually blend this together. And I think I have a solution. Um, I have this wonderful little uh, screwdriver that I think um, came with some part works. Now, um, I, I, I don't know if you can find one like this, but what I'm hoping you can see is, is that the mottling on this skin kind of looks like this mottling on the handle. And so what I'm hoping to do is once I get my, uh, my epoxy putty where I want it, is that I'm going to come along. Um, oops, there we go. I'm going to come along and I'm going to push this in to try and get that spiking effect. And hopefully that will kind of help me blend in here. That's the theory. That's what I'm attempting to do. And so uh, what we've got to do now is we, we've, 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 got to, we've got to sort of glue this baby together uh, because um, it needs to be one solid piece so that when you paint it, uh, it, it all blends together because these seam lines, this is not something you can do in, in, in sort of sub-assemblies. You've got to get this thing together. It weighs a ton. The other thing we're going to do is, is we're going to put uh, a pin right here in his foot and uh, possibly in the other foot as well, I don't know, but definitely in this foot uh, and uh, to, to, help, to help get this uh, secured to the base. I'm not just going to rely on gluing it. I am using uh, a CA glue. Um, not all CA glues... Um, are born the same. Um, I have learned that, interestingly enough. Now, nobody promotes me, zero. I don't get, I don't, I, I, I don't get any um, payment at all for saying what I say. Uh, I just like to sort of try all these different, various different things and share with you my experience so that you can make decisions about whether these products are good for you or not. That's all. Bit of a test kitchen, as I always say. Now, um, I'm not trying to knock anybody's products. I'm just telling you my experience. I went and picked up this. It's from Glue Master. Um, um, I'll, I'll put it on camera quickly, but I don't really, I'm not here to shame anybody, so I don't really want to. But not a great CA glue. Not a great C CA glue. It's kind of weird. It, uh, I don't have good luck with it. What I have great luck with is the good old standby, and I'm sure all of you have this or have seen this, um, Zap. And uh, I think this is from a company called Pesa. Um, I don't know. Um, I think it is. Uh, yeah, Pesa Technology uh, are the owners of Zap, and they make all kinds of different glues. I'm telling you, there's a huge difference. I've tried this on vinyl, and it bonds really well. And you don't need to zap kick it. Just let it set, and it'll bite, and it, and it, and it does really well. Um, so anyway, like I said, not all CA glows are, are the same. And I do have a few others uh, as well in my arsenal. But um, this week, <laughs> I'm, I'm big into zap. Okay, so... Um, so before we talk about uh, puttying these seams, I, I wanted to uh, deconstruct this a little bit and, and talk about uh, how this kit came to me. Um, the tail, um, let me get you closer here. This tail pushes on quite well. So we'll push it on and we'll glue it. Obviously, we've got this seam to deal with. We know it. Okay. You can see it's got this keying. It keys right here, and it all sort of sits in quite nicely. And it's a chunk of vinyl. I mean, it's solid. It's not hollow. Whereas I believe the Horizon models were hollow, and that was a bit of an issue. However, when it came to the legs, I had some problems. This particular one, for instance, it's hard to tell now, 
Um, but I have, uh, I've cleaned this up quite a bit. I, I have had to cut it, um, grind it, and do all kinds of other things to it to get it to fit. It did not want to sit, sit in here at all. And it's not a function um, at all of having to heat this and, and do all that. It, 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 I don't know whether it had expanded over time or they just they just like that, but it would not, even with some brute force, it would not sit nicely in this key. In this key, it wouldn't do it, wouldn't do it. So I, I spent a lot of time, uh, in fact, uh, I kid you not, I spent about an hour or, or two uh, the other day and I, um, I put this together. Uh, I cleaned it up and I put it together. And so it keys in nicely now and it sits flush as you can see. And now I'm gonna be able to putty this. The other side uh, sat in quite nicely, although it's got a gap here uh, that is massive. So we're gonna be doing a lot of puttying there, but that's okay. That's what it's about, right? So. Then it comes to our little uh, hands, and uh, they, sit, they sit quite nicely. This side might need a little cleanup, um, but th that, that should be okay. And then the other issue I had was here with the jaw. So the jaw here had a key in it I have removed. I've, cu I've cut it off. Um, it's got these two anchor uh, pieces here, so you, you, you can see. So the idea is, is that your tongue goes in first, and that key seems to work quite nicely. So I'm leaving that so just, just because it makes it a little easier. And then uh, I've left the, the sort of the, the very butt of the key in there um, so that I could know where to slide it in. And it does... It, it, it pops into the jaw quite nicely, but as you can see, we've got this massive um, gap here that we're going to have to deal with. Now, the nice thing about it is, is you've got all this fatty tissue, so we should be able to have a lot of fun uh, creating this, and we shouldn't have any problems getting rid of this. Uh, a little trickier here around the jawline, but I think we'll be okay. Um, and then, of course, the uh, the eyes, the eyes here um, are are going to be everything on this model. Uh, we've talked about eyes in the past, and um, you know, you they got to look right. If they don't look right, he he's not very threatening. <laughs> so so we're gonna have to get those 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 eyes right. But anyway, um, so all those pieces come together and everything is locking in place. So that'll be good. Um, the roadkill here, this little Stegosaurus, um, has got a couple of horns I just, I'm gonna stick in there. Um, you can see he's got a massive hoof print here uh, where um, the weight of this dinosaur has just sort of collapsed into him. So um, we're gonna have to have some fun with that. Um, and I did glue his legs on this morning, his, un his, his under legs, I glued those on and um, they, they sit underneath so there's no need to putty those because uh, they sit on this, this piece of base here. Uh, here's the keying part that, you, that he sits in like that. So you, you just, you know, you see a little bit but not a lot. Now, uh, interesting thing about this base is that I actually think it's it, it's kind of cool, you know. It gives you it gives you the basic uh, elements of what you want. Now, the issue is, do we need this base? Do we need it? Because if we get rid of the base, and let's say we had a baby dino here, sort of, you know, pinned up against pinned up against uh, this somehow, um, then I'm not entirely sure we're, we're, we're going to need a base. I, do, I don't know. Um, but, you know, 
the reality of it is, is what the bass does is it helps key everything in. And I do like some of the elements here, some of the muddy elements. And so perhaps what we're going to be able to do, perhaps, is, um, is sort of use this as our lock and then just build over this, augment over this. And, and, and we, won't, we won't take it all the way to the end. We'll just sort of take it here, you know, and, and perhaps we'll, we will use this um, as a way to not only create a little more height, but allow us to lock in exactly uh, where everything needs to go. Don't know, um, but um, it's definitely worth thinking about. Um, and then the only other thing I want to quickly talk about is I'm going to be using this, which is uh, Infinity's uh, Premium Magic Putty. Now, um, I have been having an awful lot of success with this. Now, of course, I've got Magic Sculpt. I've got big tubs of it. Um, but the only thing I'll say about this, and again, <laughs> I'm not paid to say it, is it gets really, really soft, really nice and soft in your hands. And so I have um, a lot more fun sculpting with it. It just seems to be a lot more friendly. Um, but that could be me, I don't know. But anyway, that's what I'm gonna be using on this and we'll continue to play with it. Okay, so uh, let us press on. I'm gonna, you know, <laughs> Sometimes it's really fun to stop and do just a little bit of research and, and, and really dive into what it is you, that you're creating. I think it some, sometimes it stimulates the imagination and I, make, I think it, it, takes, it takes the hobby, I think, personally to a whole nother level. And so um, thinking about the, uh, the, the names of these dinosaurs and, you know, the Latin, obviously, these are all Latin names, Tyrannosaurus Rex, you know, the Lizard Tyrant King, uh, is, is, is sort of really uh, perfect for this, for this thing and uh, this creature. And when you think about its enormity, the size of it, and what it what it looked like it's it's ridiculous right i mean these things came from eggs and, and turned into this and they're walking around the earth can you only imagine um so uh it it just starts to really stimulate your your imagination and i get really excited about it okay and, uh, and enough bloviating um so i have uh used my uh, Infini uh, epoxy sculpt and I've put this this beautiful thing together and I've given it a coat of primer so um, it's uh, you can you can see uh, it's sort of all blended together quite nicely actually and I'm and I'm and I'm pretty ha pretty happy with it um, and I've uh, been able to start really doing, uh, you know, some, some, some sort of blending. Now, I've got a, a few issues I'm going to deal with. Uh, once again, you know, solid vinyl kit. So I wanted to point out a couple of things. So right here, uh, I'm going to do it on this side, where the jawline is here. Um, it isn't lining up correctly. Um, now this one isn't in all the way in fairness to it. So, uh, let me, let me, let me get it plugged in. There we go. Okay. That's better. Okay. It's not as I, I, I did, <laughs> I knew it wasn't that bad. It's bad, but it's not, it's not that bad. Okay. So, um, what we're going to do now, and we're going to have to be really, really careful here is we're going to get our sculpt and we're going to blend this in. Uh, this is obviously the sinew that attaches the lower and upper jaw. And uh, it's, it's quite a, a, a tremendous amount of, of, of tendon and muscle here. And so that's got to be blended in. And you can see as my, my blade points, you, you can see the gappage here. So it's not lining up correctly. Um, so we're going to deal with all of that uh, a little better on this side. Um, and then what we're going to have to do, and what I've started to do here is, is I've got a little bit of paint on the inside of the, 
uh, a little bit of paint on the inside of the mouth. Well, that's a good shot, isn't it? <laughs> Dead Stegosaurus being eaten by the king. Um, ah, okay, um, so that's what we're doing. And um, it's one of those frustrating things where, you know, you're, you're going to do some detail painting here, but you're going to have to do some finish work as well. Um, but I also want to get the airbrush out, and I, I, I do want to um, airbrush on some of the, the lizard-like uh, details uh, for, for, the, for the racks, um, because I, that, that's going to help me sort of get my base coat down and then uh, blend in some of the sort of the, the very kind of um, lizard-like qualities of this. Um, and then we can uh, go back in and do our dry brushing and our detail brushing and then start to pick things out. The mouth is going to be critical because I don't care who you are. The first thing you want to look at is the absolute violence and horror of these mouths. And if you can get the eyes right and you can get these, this mouth right, uh, I think you've conquered this kit. Um, and there's a lot of talented painters online who have done their versions of this and they look beautiful. So, um, you know, not intimidating, but you want to get it right. You know, um, I, I don't know if we'll ever really know the quality and the color of these skins, but I think about elephant skin and you look at a rhino skin and you look how tough that is and, 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 and just how used and dirty it is from the weather and from the sun and from just its living, you know? I mean, very, very, very kind of interesting. And when you look up really close at this, uh, this skin, it's got a microscopic sort of hair on it, on an elephant that is, and, and it, it's got different grays and blacks and blues in it. It's kind of interesting. On the other hand, our uh, Mr. T-Rex here um, don't really know. I mean, there are so many different versions of what this could potentially look like. So we're going to sort of take a blend of all of them and give it what we think uh, is its, um, you know, uh, is, is its look, is its correct look. Um, now... Um, as I ha have said uh, earlier in, in, in the year, we're going to be spending a little more time on finish and the quality of the finish on the, on the channel. Um, so to that end, I have a base that I've been working on. Now it's got, a, it's got a, a, a mahogany stain around it. And then the question is, is how much of this base are we going to actually use? Well, the reality of it is, when you put uh when you put your sort of base that comes with the kit down on this um and you 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 start to put this into position um you can see um you know it it really is um it really sort of comes off and and i think that if you're going to sort of present it now i'm looking at it as if it's looking towards me right so um, if I turn this around and you are me, you'll see what I mean in terms of uh, the drama of this. So this is, you're looking at the front, I'm looking at the back, but then I'll be looking at the front and you'll be looking at the back. <laughs> you didn't know you are going to get a science lesson, did you? <laughs> All right. We're not making rocket fuel here, folks, I promise you. So anyway, what you realize is, is that what you, what you really need to do is, is shut up compressor. God. Uh, what you really need to do is, uh, you know, if you, if you're going to sort of place it straight on like, like this, you can see how dramatic this is. This is sort of like get away from my kill. You know, that's the, the that's the message you're getting. So I think that's it for me. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach the base that came with this. I'm going to attach it to the, um, 
to the actual uh, base itself. I'm gonna, I'm gonna glue this down or maybe even screw this down, I'm not sure. Um, now the reason why I'm gonna do that is, is because it helps me tremendously in terms of locating where everything should go on this, on this model. And then um, I will blend in accordingly and I'll come out, I'll come out all the way to the sides, but I might blend out irregularly. So it doesn't, you know, it's not a perfect square. It's kind of just kind of blended out. And then that will give me plenty of room to put in some, some greenery and uh, some, some old uh, driftwood that I found that I love that looks like prehistoric trees. And I think, I, I, I think this is going to look fantastic. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of ready to go here. Now, uh, there are, you know, a couple of issues. And one of those issues is, as I talked about earlier, is this mouth, right? So you want this mouth to, um, put this right here for now. You want this mouth to really pop, as I said. So um, I've, uh, I've started to, to, to sort of play with some color and I think I've got the tongue where I want it. Um, here's the tongue. Um, so I'm, you know, pretty happy with that. Um, and it's been uh, sufficiently glossed over. And I, I, I've, um, I think you'll see now um, that if I, if I just temporarily stick in the mouth like that you, you can see we we really start to get an effect now i'm not sure if i'm going to have any flesh dripping down from here from him um you know or some blood where he dripping down his mouth uh because he's just made a kill but uh obviously we need to to continue with this wet look in the mouth um but what i'm going to do is is try and do uh, as much of the the sort of the base painting uh, before before I commit to locking in uh, locking in this jaw because as you can see I've got the palette I, I need to, to paint and I'm I want to continue painting this and get some get some basic teeth marks on it you know just just so that um, I'm not fighting the inside of this mouth and missing anything so um, obviously, we're going to have to come back and do some real detail painting and, and, and pick up a lot of things. But uh, a couple of colors I'm working with. Um, I love this black red from Vallejo. I think this is a really good color for the inside of the mouth. And what I'm uh, doing is, is I'm, I'm augmenting with uh, the brown rose. From their uh, from their flesh tone collection, there's like I've got like nine or ten different uh, flesh tones uh, that come in a kit. Um, so those are working really well. And all of the wet look, you know, for the saliva and all of that, I'm using my good old standby, which is uh, I use the Liquitex, and that's what I'm using. So. Uh, there are other options, plenty of other options you can use, uh, but th these are the ones that, that, that I happen to be using today on this, on, on this model. Okay, so next step is um, I'm going to um, continue to, uh, to, to paint here. Um, I'm, I'm going to continue to, you know, get, get what I'm doing here is just get some base color down. Um, and then um, once I've, I think I've got it to as far as I can get it, uh, then I'll go ahead and I will attach the jaw, uh, get the tongue in, attach the, attach the, the, the jaw, and I'll go ahead and uh, blend that in and get that all sealed up. And uh, so that, that is that sort of next steps for, for this kit, uh, for this model. Um, now, um, so, so yeah, so, uh, I think that I'm just going to continue painting. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about what my technique is for here, because it's actually very interesting. If you are an oil painter and you ever watch the great Bob Ross, you know, um, or the great Bill Alexander, big feud there. Um, 
you'll know that it's the wet on wet oil painting. And so the wonderful thing about these Vallejos is you can do a wonderful wet on wet technique, meaning you put down a base color, but before it dries, you introduce your other colors and you start to blend. And that's how you start to get some really cool effects. That's how I got this effect on the tongue. And, um, you know, I, it, it, it works really well because obviously it mimics uh, the look of, 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 real, of real flesh and sinew. Anyway, these are just techniques that I've learned or I am learning. So as I do, I'll just share with you what my thought process is. And um, that way it, it will either be helpful or not. <laughs> or you'll have some great ideas for me as you always do. Okay, so let's plow on. Progress. I like progress. Uh, <clears throat> so... What I've done is, is I've sort of settled on a, a pose and that was really important for a couple of reasons and I'll explain why in just a second. But uh, essentially what I've done is, is I've, I've, I've done what I said I was going to do, which was I've placed it so that when it sits on the shelf, it sits in this position. Um, he is uh, definitely uh, sort of saying back off of my kill, and I love that. And I deliberately chose to use the base, which we're going to blend in with uh, ground cover and make it all seamless and go away. But I think it's helpful in helping me lock in just exactly where this needs to go. And... You know, there's something to be said for this sort of footprint, and I'll I'll play with this. I'll add some mud around here, uh, and uh, we'll 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 have some blood uh, dripping out of his, uh, probably just on this side, some blood dripping out of his jaw, and dripping onto his kill. Um, so uh, I'm 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 really really happy with with everything, and what that's going to do is allow me to to sort of start focusing now on. Uh, just uh, putting putting these uh, putting these beautiful creatures together, and and then sort of starting to blend everything together. Uh, but quickly, let's take a look at what I've done. So, just to sort of deconstruct this for a second, um, I have put a pin, put a pin in it. <laughs> um, I've given uh, I put a pin in his foot, um, and so that's rock solid. That's not going anywhere. Um, and that is, I've got to locate, I've got to locate for that right there. And then what I did was, is under the steg, I put this, uh, screw, which does not go through. Um, it doesn't go through at all, as you can see. Now I'll clean up the bottom. I'll give it a felt. I'll put some felt back here and some feet so it looks nice and finished and clean. But the nice thing about where this screw is is it lives under a uh, baby steg here uh, or lovingly referred to as roadkill so you just don't see him and then uh, you can drop your uh, your your t-rex in like this and um, he lives perfectly here now what i haven't decided yet is whether or not i'm going to actually put a pin in uh, in in this um, in this foot and, and have it go through the steg so that I've got something to glue into I mean that certainly will make it a lot a lot a lot better I mean and even with these down and I can feel them down you know uh, there's there's still a little bit of wobble but it's not going anywhere and you know the idea is not to the idea is it lives on a shelf, so it doesn't, it's not going to be shaken to death. Uh, a couple of other things to show you, um, because, I, because I think they're important. I've, uh, what I've done is, is I've been working on the mouth. Now, we talked about this a little earlier because one of the things I was concerned about was being able to actually get in here and... Um, and uh, sh um, I'm going to show you here. I'm going to lift this up and, and show you what I've been working on. So um, I have permanently put his tongue in. That's been sort of painted. 
uh, as you can see, and I've I've put some gloss on that. Now I'm going to do one more more coat, uh, but I wanted to get this all blended in, so all my puttying is in, and you can see even underneath uh, we're all there. And um, I'm going to give this a coat now of primer, uh, just just over that that seal, and I've sealed in his jaw too, so. Um, He's pretty ready to go. And I've done just a very basic rough in of the teeth and, and everything so that I could get some paint all over before I put this, uh, you know, put, put this jaw together because I was really concerned about missing anything or not getting a good coat of paint on there. And so uh, that, that was quite successful. And so now it's really just about all the details and there's a lot of details. So uh, step one now is just to get a basic undercoat on this. Um, I think I'm going to go with a, a light sand uh, or maybe, may, maybe something towards the greens. I don't know. And obviously I'm going to go lighter to darker. And, um, and then we'll, we'll work on all the various different musculature and the, the the skin you know here we've got um these wonderful knobs here uh these sort of little bony knobs on the skin and they'll all have to be touched and and um obviously we'll be doing a lot of dry brushing and we'll also be doing an awful lot of washes and i've got some really cool washes for this so super exciting Weighs a ton, though. It's, it's pretty darn heavy, I have to say. Okay, so um, good progress. Base position is, is good to go. Um, <clears throat> steg position is good to go. Um, so now I can just start concentrating on uh, all, the, uh, all the elements and starting to build them up. So um, I'm pretty, um, pr pretty ex ex excited about this. Uh, I've got quite a bit of painting to do, and I've got quite a bit of, of, uh, of work to do on this base. So I'm thinking, uh, I'm not sure, I'm, I, I'm, I'm sort of debating whether or not we should cut this off now and go to a part two, uh, because there, there is an awful lot to, 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 to deal with here, but I think we're in great shape. So I... I, 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 do think, uh, I do think that's where I'll leave it for this, for this episode, because otherwise it just gets too long. Okay, so uh, we'll do a part two um, uh, for next week. So there you go. Uh, this is the T-Rex from uh, Pegasus uh, models that we're building. And uh, I, hope, uh, I hope you're enjoying this build as much as I'm enjoying putting this together. It's, it's a lot of fun. And uh, we'll, we'll plow on next week. Uh, so as always, I wish all of you, please, be safe, be well, build something, and I'll see you next time. Take care, everybody.